Okay, so we're going to get Active Directory working here on our server. Let me log in. So by default, Active Directory is not running on your Windows 2003 server. In order to get it running, we select Start Run and we run the program called DC Promo. Yeah, the, you don't need to necessarily specify the .exe because it's going to assume that this is some sort of executable. But yeah, it is an executable and it's in the search path, so it's in the Windows folder. So here, welcome to Active Directory Wizard. It's going to take us to a nice wizard, and it's going to ask us for um, the operating system compatibility. Um, if we want to, it's warning us about some older Windows 95 NT systems. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're going to go on. We're going to configure a domain controller for a new domain. So this is a brand new domain that exists. We don't have a, a domain that we're going to be joining this to. So that's where we're going to just choose this first option here. And here is where it talks about the forest. Now remember the forest is a collection of domains. And we currently don't have a forest. So because this is going to be a new domain, this is also going to be a new forest. And when you guys do this in your lab, you'll be doing the exact same thing. You'll be creating a new forest. So now here's where it's asking for the full name of the D of the domain. And of course it uses DNS as we talked about earlier. It uses that fully qualified uh, domain name. So the example they have there is headquarters.example.microsoft.com. So we can choose a name. Now you can choose a name like domain.com and that would work. Um, but this is also a public name. Um, so what I mean by public is the .com is what's actually what would be available if someone were to go www.domain.com. So you don't have to use the .com, .edu, .gov. You can use something like this, .prv. Or you can use something like INT for internal. Or domain.private. Or domain.lan. You can use whatever you want for, an, for the top level domain. So we're going to use, we'll use domain.lan. That's like a good one, I think, kind of relates to what we're doing here in class. What it's doing now is it's actually checking DNS and trying to resolve domain.lan. And it should come back and say, um, I can't resolve domain.lan. Um, and it will give us that prompt here in a second after we identify this one. So now this is for older versions of Windows that don't necessarily understand totally the Windows 2000 or 2003 directory structure. They fall back and use NetBIOS, the workgroup concept of NetBIOS. Remember we worked with NetBIOS and talked about NetBIOS a little bit? Okay, so this is the NetBIOS name for your domain. And we could call it just plain old domain. What it does is essentially just removes the, um, the top level domain, the .lan. Um, so we could keep it like that if we wanted to, or we could change it to like domain lan, whatever we wanted to. So we'll just keep it at domain for now. And here's where it's asking us, where do you want to store the Active Directory database? Remember we talked about the SAM database being the local copy, all computers, all Windows computers have a SAM database. That database is stored on the hard drive. And here we have to store the Active Directory database now. Where do you want to store it? Well, if we had multiple physical drives in this computer, we could choose a different location for it, but we're going to choose the default locations and they just note where they're located. It's in C Windows folder in the NTDS. The uh, NT directory structure is what that stands for. And then we have the log folder and this is where it's going to actually store the log. Meaning all of the all of the transactions that occur in the database are going to be stored in the same folder. 
And this is where you could change this to a different drive letter if you wanted to, but we're going to leave it by default. Here's where we are need to store the sysvol. The system volume is where it stores all of the public files that are accessible by all of the computers on the network. When they try to request files or look at information on the directory, this is where it'll come and look in the C Windows sysvol folder. And you'll recognize that when we go and start working with um, login scripts. We'll be browsing to this folder to actually put a login script out there because that's what the workstations will be looking to use when you log in. It'll be running or executing a login script. So we'll leave that be. And here's where it came up with that DNS error because it said, um, I cannot find domain.land. It doesn't exist. What do you want to do? Well, we have three options here. We have, I have corrected the problem, performed DNS diagnostics again, so that'll essentially do another search. We don't want to do that option. Install and configure the DNS server on this computer and set the computer to use the DNS server as its preferred DNS server. Or the last option is I'll correct the problem later and do DNS manually, which is fairly complicated and I don't recommend you doing it. Um, so the middle option is the best one. Install and configure DNS. So that means it's going to set up a DNS zone and add all of these sub records or all of the records inside of that zone so workstations would be able to resolve and find the domain so we can manage the workstations and users can log in and so forth. So we want them, we want this wizard to actually do DNS, everything in DNS automatically to this wizard. So we're going to hit next on that middle option. Now it's saying, well, some server programs, such as Windows NT, which is an older version, cannot read information that's stored on the newer Windows 2000 or 2003 Active Directories. So do we, do we have any older versions of Windows 2000 running on our network? And if we don't, then we're going to choose this one compatible with 2000 or newer systems. Okay, but this is in the case if you were going into a company that already had existing servers. So yeah, we don't right now, so we're good there. And this is the restore mode password. This is important for when we have to do a system recovery. So if our server were to fail and we needed to revert to a backup that we had taken a week ago or a couple days ago, it would prompt us for this password when we go into the recovery mode. I don't know if you remember, but when you first start up Windows, the setup CD, and it's booting up off the CD, it says, press R to enter recovery console. I don't know if you remember seeing that prompt. Some of us might have, might not have, but you will from now on because I pointed it out. So when you first start up Windows 2003 server installation, it'll prompt you to enter the recovery, press this key sequence or this key button. I can't remember exactly. I think it's R. So this is the password that will be prompting. So this needs to be a fairly secure password because if they, somebody has a copy of your backup and they have this password, they now can completely recreate your whole directory structure and your whole infrastructure, your whole active directory. So for this, we're just going to use password one, just keeping it simple because we are in a lab environment. And here it just gives us a summary of everything we chose and we hit next. And this is where it's going to actually build the directory. And when it's finished, it'll say it needs to reboot. And then it'll come back up. And the local SAM database of this server will have been erased or not used anymore. And it will then revert to only using the Active Directory security database. So here it's writing information in DNS and doing all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so it says Active Directory Wizard is done. Click Finish. And it's going to want to restart. 